Okay, tonight we're going to be speaking about acid-base balance. I'm going to tell you, if, I wish I had started researching this a lot earlier because there's <laughs> so, there really is so much to do uh, where this is concerned. And uh, if you've noticed, in, I mean, where I'm concerned, whenever I'm doing a presentation, my focus is always, always on um, concepts, how things work in general. I don't focus on a disease or a specific nutritional supplement. I try to look at the big picture and show how these, these different things connect. Because it's when you understand how these different things connect, when you see how concepts like uh, inflammation, antioxidants, things like uh, coordination, regulation, when you see how those things work, it's easier for you to make the right decisions about your health. And the, the, the truth is your body wants to be well, it wants to be healed, and it will do everything within its power to attain that end. It's when you understand concepts, it's when you understand big pictures, that is when you'll be able to help aid your body do what it needs to do. So we're going to go over a couple of things in this webinar, and I have an outline before you. I hope everybody can hear me. I can hear can you. Everybody? Okay. Nobody's typed in that they can't. Okay, good. But you sound really distant there, Sherry. Oh, I don't know why. All right. Okay. Anyway, um, why do we need to understand pH balance? We're going to go over that. What does it entail? How is it controlled? How is it regulated? The danger of acidic conditions, and we have probably heard a lot about acids. Acid blood, acidic blood can lead to all kinds of disease. That is true. Acidity and disease. Uh, what you can do to restore the balance, and of course, these are all very, very important. Like I said, we try to look at things. This is all really on our website. We, we're organizing and arranging our different topics according to different areas. So, so that people, when they go to our website, they'll be able to. Uh, oh, this is what I need for this, this is what I need for this, this is what I need to understand. You, uh, it's, it's a lifelong uh, learning process that we're trying to promote here. You just can't get the answers by just quick fixes. The, that day has come and it's gone. It's time for you to get in-depth knowledge of the things that pertain to health and life. So under how the body works, I'll just go back real quick. The topmost part there is how, that's the most important thing, how your body works. And that is further subdivided into about eight different things. And right there, up there at the top is homeostasis. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. Uh, we must get these right. And um, the, the, those that are underlined are those that already have, um, that we've, we've done, we've had talks on, that we've, we've treated. So uh, again, they are available at our website. Okay. Why study acid-base balance? Well, I'm going to show you. If you think about the human body, if you think about yourself, you, uh, and that's the man right there in the center, of course, it could, it could be a woman. But we are constantly in an environment that we're constantly interacting with other people, whether our family, our kids at work, our wives, our spouses. We are constantly interacting with those things, with those people. Also, not only that, we are interacting with the environment, the, the temperature, the heat, the cold. All those things influence, including radiation, light, sunlight, ultraviolet, violet rays, um, spiritual environment, emotional environment. Um, it's a whole gamut of things. We don't realize it, but there are way more impulses, way more uh, communication things that we are receiving that, that, than we are aware of. But your body is. And your body is constantly adapting to these different stimuli and changing and reacting and controlling. So your body is doing a, a lot of things as it's doing as, as you're walking around or as, as you're listening to uh, our presentation to, today. As it is without, in the larger picture of the human body, so it is within. You see that cell there? This is actually an immune cell, but it, it goes for any other kind of uh, cell in the body. Your cells are constantly relating to one another. They're reacting. They're receiving information. They're distributing distributing information. And uh, the immune cells probably do this more than any other thing. <sighs> if anything goes wrong, your cells have to respond to it. So we have to see and understand that this is a, 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 there's a huge picture that we're looking at. 
um, that there are several different forces that act upon us. And I'm trying to give you a big picture before we go into the acid-base balance. ICS stands for the intracellular <laughs> uh, fluid. It's, it's actually supposed to be F, I-C-F. Okay, so extracellular fluid, that's E-C-F, and then the external environment. Uh, so basically all these, the, the, this is this red part actually represents the cell and then the cell is surrounded by fluids including the blood and extracellular fluid and the external environment. The external inf environment influence, influences the extracellular fluid and that influences the intracellular fluid. Again, the whole point is we are constantly being bombarded by all kinds of things. Why is the acid-base balance? Well, he has a great quote. The pH of blood must be kept almost constant. Even minor variations are dangerous. If pH falls to nine point, um, excuse me, six point nine five coma and death results. If pH rises to seven point seven, tetanic convulsions occur. Now, what is a regular? What is a, the ideal pH level? Seven point four. We have to have our pH levels at 7.4. A little less than that, a little more than that, but not a whole lot because as you just saw, um, those extreme things can happen. But the truth is, folks, the truth is most Western culture, uh, people in our Western hemisphere, most of us have a pH that is less than 7.4 to an extent that it can predispose to disease. As a matter of fact, uh, we talk about inflammation. Some of those things that we talked about in our talk, in our talk on inflammation, Dr. Marvin too did a great job. Uh, inflammation is promulgated, it's promoted by acidic blood. It is reduced by slightly alkaline blood. Of course, both extremes should be, should be avoided. It is of the greatest importance. This is by a guy, a doctor by the name of Walter Cannon. He's one of the, the leaders in physio physio physiology in this country way back when, in the early aspects of the century. It is of the greatest importance to the existence of existence and proper action of the cells, pardon that syntax, that the blood shall not vary to a noteworthy degree either in the acid or the alkaline direction. And of course, we just said that. I'm just going to give you a few examples of what happens when, when things go wrong. The heart stops, whether it's too alkaline or too acidic. And of course, these, these, uh, these handouts are also available if we're going too fast for you. We just want to lay the groundwork. Even in the gut, there's a lot, of, there's, there's a lot that has to do with acidity and pH balance. Over acidity and the growth and, and, the growth and polification of harmful organisms are inextricably linked. This is a book by the, in a book called The pH Miracle. That's a really, really good book. Just came out recently. Lots of studies and research have been done on it. Uh, when bacteria multiply, they can produce waste products which further pollute the environment. So we don't want that. We don't want that at all. <sighs> Let's give on to that. There is an optimum range of pH values within which the different enzymes work most effectively. Outside of this range, the action of an enzyme is inhibited, and at ex extremes, it doesn't work at all. And the example we give is in the stomach. Some enzymes work in a very low acidic pH. Other enzymes work in a high, um, more alkaline pH. And we're going to show, show you a table showing how the, uh, which, which environments are optimum for which which areas of the body. Okay, enzymes are a huge aspect of our functioning as human beings. If enzymes don't work in our cells or enzymes, of course, you have to realize that enzymes work in the cells and enzymes also work on food. So you need to understand that those are two different categories of enzymes. 